hello everyone and welcome to Kitchen Party, sponsored by Bakespace.com. You can find out everything about Kitchen Party and Bakespace by visiting Bakespace.com slash news. You can also find past episodes of all of our recordings here in Google Hangouts. Uh, of course, as usual, we are joined by our host, Jeff Houck. Woohoo! From the Tampa Bay Times and Renee Lynch from the LA Times. Hello. So guys, very quickly, what's going on in your world this week? Well, I'm very uh, excited. Oh, go to, go ahead, Jeff. You go. I'm very excited about what she's about to announce, so go ahead, Renee. <laughs> I got a copy of the new Smitten Kitchen Cookbook and I'm looking forward to reading it. So, that's what I'm excited about. <laughs> Woo! Very good. And Jeff. I'm in I'm in Philadelphia right now. We're uh, we're gonna we're producing Tech Munch Philly on Saturday, which I'm really excited about. Go um, Philly! Yeah, I looked at the venue today. It looks beautiful. I'm so excited, and that's pretty much my whole week is just preparing. So what everyone, about you, Jeff? <laughs> I'm a. Uh, I'm uh, I'm excited. We just broke ground in Tampa for a new hotel called the Epicurean, which is a food-themed boutique hotel uh, that's being done by uh, Burn Steakhouse in Tampa. So I was at the groundbreaking for that this week, and it should be done in about a year and a half. And uh, everybody's gonna have to fly in and and come stay at it because it's gonna be full of awesome. They bring little amuse amuse bouche to your room or what? Oh, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to pimp this mother out like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> well, as usual, Kitchen Party is our chance to talk with all of our foodie friends about what's going on in the food world. And our guest today is Nadia G from Bitchin' Kitchen. If you have, the, Hello. You have the cooking Hello. channel on your you cable say. system. Uh, you may have seen just a very quick bio of uh, Nadia. Nadia G is a young and f young and funny, and can cook up a storm in three-inch cherry stilettos. Really, stilettos? That's me. <laughs> Hailed as the Julia Child of the Net Generation, she is creator and host of cooking channel series Nadia G's Bitch in Kitchen, which we got to talk about that name in a little bit. Uh, hilarious, informative, and deliciously demented, this stylish comedy cooking show was unlike anything else on TV. Set in a candy-colored kitchen decked out in animal print and leather, Nadia G's Bitchin' Kitchen looks at the funny side of everyday life situations and turns them into occasions worth celebrating. Welcome, Nadia. Ah, thank you. What an intro. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> So first I don't of all, think Douglas has ever said any of those words together ever in his I know. life. <laughs> it's a lot of, lot of words, a lot going on. Julia Child of the Net Generation and animal prints and stilettos. And it's very exciting, Bitch and Kitchen, as you can imagine. It's like a, it's like a Lynch film, but linear. <laughs> if I can get the first question, the one thing I have to ask is, where did the name come from? Well, you know, I mean, um, bitchin' means cool, badass, um, and uh, I always wanted to do a, a, a comedy cooking show, so I figured bitchin', kitchen, it rhymes, it works, it's catchy. And, and uh, honestly, uh, I, it's very important for, for a show to have a, a catchy name that people remember. You know, there's so many channels out there. There's so much going on, so much saturation in the media that you, you kind of, you need something that, that people are going to say, whoa, okay, I'll check that out. And if you hear Bitch in Kitchen, you probably won't forget it. Definitely, well, I, I have to agree there. People are flipping through the channels, Nadia, and they see you uh, on their screen. They're not going to forget that either. It's a, <laughs> it's a pretty singular uh, TV show. Um, I, uh, just, uh, hey, to guys, I have to tell you a, a funny story that happened in Philly last night. I was getting my car rental, and the manager named Charlie, we were talking about stuff, and he's like, what does your company do? And I'm like, oh, I run this food site called Bake Space. And he's like, oh, my God, I love cooking. And I said, oh, that's great. We also do this live show. And I'm like, do you know Nadia G? And he goes, oh, my God, bitch in kitchen. <laughs> he <laughs> <posed> it. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, 
It's always so cool to hear stories like that because when I first came up with the show, I was like, all right, 25 to 35 would be our demographic. But when the show started to air, we realized that lots of different people were tuning in for different reasons. It, it became the cooking show that the only cooking show that a uh, husband would ever watch, or, you know, the teenage girls. And it, there's a little something for everybody, whether it's the comedy or the fashion or the half naked men. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, we missed that part too in the intro. In case you missed that. Um. <laughs> On that regard, I'm going to start taking my clothes off to appeal to... No. no, you know, it's funny, Nadia, I saw you at the South Beach Festival last year doing a demo, and it was amazing to me to see how broad the cross-section was, and I, I know that had to be a surprise to you to see all different ages and all different types of people, you know, kind of responding to your show, because, I mean, originally you started on the web, and you know it was a it was an online based effort, and then it kind of made the jump. And I I don't know that did you expect it to be as successful as it was? A part of me always did. I'll be honest. You know, a lot of people answer that question like, "Oh no, I'm so surprised," <laughs> but. You know how it is, um, when you create something, you, you work really hard to make it a reality. And, and for me, the only way I could have put in those 12, 15 hours a day, seven days a week for years and years and years was to really visualize that this was, was going to be a success. Otherwise, it's like, oof, too painful. Where did it all start? Where did you have the concept? And was it this concept when you began? Was it Bitch and Kitchen from the very beginning? Well, you know, I was doing a lot of skit comedy in early 2000, a lot of comedy songs, like I'm Never Drinking Like That Again, uh, which we redid for Bitch and Kitchen Rehab Recipes later on. Uh, but my love of food kind of started catching up with me. I started watching a lot of Food Network, and I'm like, wow, wouldn't it be awesome uh, to, to blend these two things, the comedy and the food? And I came up with Bitch and Kitchen. I was also inspired by Alton Brown, uh, because he's one of the only ones out there who has a scripted cooking show. Granted, his stuff goes more in the, in the science direction. He's got skits along those lines. But it was interesting to see that a cooking show can be a lot more than just, uh, you know, hey, I love tomatoes, my grandma loves tomatoes, don't we all love chopping tomatoes, you know. And um, and it was funny because <laughs> recently I saw Alton Brown and I was like, oh, man, you know, you're such an idol, like you inspired Bitch and Kitchen. The poor guy looked like he had created a monster. He's like, oh, <laughs> really? He's like, great, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> What, you know, it, the, the, the question I always wondered is how do you decide to balance, because, I mean, obviously, anybody who's seen the show, you have characters, there's a, a narrative kind of theme to it, but how do you decide to, to balance all that with, um, you know, the actual food component? Because a lot of people might get distracted by all that other stuff, all the costumes and the, and the characters and stuff. Where, where do you decide, okay, this is where I need food and this is what I need to say? Well, it's 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 an interesting blend, you know. I uh, it, it's hard to say. It's chicken or egg. It, uh, chicken and egg. We ha we have a bit of a format now. So usually the way the show will go. So for those who aren't familiar with the show, every week we choose a theme. So it could be dysfunctional family pizza night, uh, you know, breakup brunches, dude foods, uh, you know, depression desserts, and and we do all the comedy on that theme, and then cook a meal that goes with it. And usually I'll I'll balance it out. You know, it's it's been quite a few years that I've been doing this, so we we've been able to find the magical combination. So we start off talk a little bit about the theme, and then get into cooking the first recipe, and then you know reference the theme again. The characters will chime in and either talk about uh, a featured spice or a, or a meat uh, that we're using in that episode. It, it, there's a there's a fine balance, but uh, I don't know. It's just it just happens. Is there how much of it is scripted versus ad libbed? Because it seems it seems like you guys are having a lot of fun, and I wonder how much of that is just like off the cuff. Oh, it's mostly scripted. Uh, you know, I, I write this show myself, uh, and I, I consider myself pretty lucky because there's very few comedians out there that are like, okay, come up with a joke, and then boom, shoot it the next day. Uh, so I'm really ha happy that I'm able to do that. 
So it's mostly scripted, and then, you know, on set, there'll be some moments which will just be off the cuff. But this kind of show has to be scripted because it's so tight. In order for it to make sense with, as you mentioned, everything that's going on, it has to be, you know, it has to be coherent and well thought through, and um, there has to be a logical, a couple of logical threads. So scripted is, is the way to go for me. Where did your love of comedy come from? Were you the, the kind of precocious kid who was making everybody laugh at the family dinners? How did that start? Uh, well, I started watching a lot of comedy with my mother. I mean, from the Golden Girls uh, to Carol Burnett. Um, then I started watching a lot of Saturday Night Live when I was a tween and when Farley was around. Uh, so I don't know. I just I just always loved to laugh, and I've I've always loved comedy. Do you find so that, that using the comedy helps to get your message across better? Is it a way of kind of sliding the the food question in around the outside edge by using the comedy? Well, it, it, yes, in a way. I mean. It, it, People who would never usually tune into a cooking show are definitely subconsciously learning how to make a pasta fazool <laughs> by watching the show. So it does help, uh, definitely. But I think, I think for me, it's a mixture of the two. You know, I I wouldn't be able to do just the comedy without the food, and I wouldn't be able to do just the food without the comedy. Uh, it goes together for me, and I think it also has to do a little bit with the way I grew up. Um, the kitchen was always a place where we had massive laughs and great conversations, a uh, couple of beatings. So that's, you know, where it all goes down. And we try and, and, and do that too on, on Bitch and Kitchen. What does your family make of all of this? Ah, man, you know, the, they're a little bit beside themselves. At first, when it was an internet show, they were like, stop making stupid videos on the internet and get a real job, all right? <laughs> that was <laughs> for sure. But then once it turned into a cookbook and it was tangible and the TV series and then a successful TV series, uh, they, they would have never imagined this. You know, they immigrated here, for, well, here to Montreal from Italy. Uh, so for them, you know, the whole being on television thing is just not part of of their um, their reality or their their vocabulary. It's just not. It's not it was just something unthinkable. So Nadia, when you uh, when you were first starting out, what were the key points for you in terms of how you how you built up your online presence, and then how you kind of built it up into a community, and then. How did you bring them along for the ride once you made it to TV? You know, as you said, we, we started online, so we've always been, like, web first. Um, and uh, we, we started a, a Facebook fan page uh, quite a few years ago, and uh, social and the web is, is a huge passion of mine. Um, I won Digital Media Woman of the Year, woohoo, in 2010, which is... <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, I was up against the CBC, which is the Canadian equivalent of ABC, and uh, I took the prize home. Which is, wow. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not just saying it's it's cool for me. I'm saying it's pretty cool that we live in a time where a girl and her computer can take on a dinosaur like that, you know. And um, so, with, when it comes to the social web, uh, the way I like to look at it is this: I treat it like a dinner party. So you imagine that you have, let's say, 100 or 100,000 guests over um, around the table, and you're not just going to be talking about yourself. So you're not going to throw a dinner party and stand at the head of the table and say, hey, do you like my shirt? And hey, do you want to see pictures of my kids? And hey, do you want to see a new family video? No, you're going to ask your, your guests questions about things that interest them and get them engaged. So I find that's the, the best way to look at social, and that's what we've been doing um, online since 2007. And I think now, you know, on, on Bitch and Kitchen, Bitch and Kitchen's Facebook page, we have over 100,000 Facebook fans, uh, another 35 on Nadia G, another 30-plus on Twitter. Um, 
So it's important to to engage your audience and ask them, you know, what they're thinking about stuff. Do you get a lot of feedback from your from your audience? Do you get a lot of oh, comments? Yeah. Do you get a lot of Facebook messages, Twitter, and stuff like that? Absolutely. I mean, tons. You know, I have a I have a, a, a full time social media team, and myself included, when when I can take part, and we we have a whole rollout. You know, we treat it as if it's a magazine of sorts. So, what are we going to talk about today? What contests are we going to have this week? What's going to be this week's supper club? that people can like cook up a bitchin' kitchen recipe and put their own spin on it. Uh, we have like, uh, oh, the earpiece is falling up. Sorry about that. Huh. We, you know, every, every couple of weeks we, we bring back a feature where we have like, you know, the best comment uh, uh, of that week or the worst comment and like totally ream the person. You know? <laughs> yeah. what, what, are, what are some of the best things you've heard back from your audience? I mean, what are well, they returning back to you? What are they saying to you that, that helps to continue on with your show? Lots of stuff, I'll tell you. Well, some of the coolest things have been uh, at least three fans have gotten Bitch and Kitchen tattoos. So that was <laughs> pretty Whoa. awesome. That's yeah. rather permanent, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. These aren't like these Danny DeVito tattoos I've seen where it looks nothing like Danny DeVito, is it? Like, <laughs> no, no. Okay. I was. They, well, the, what, the, the, do they look like you or are they like knives or what are they? It's our logo, so it's like uh, a, a heart with uh, the skull and the uh, spoon and fork crossbones. It's a pretty cool logo, which I designed, uh, so that makes me really proud. And and then, you know, a lot of people say things like, uh, I haven't, you know, cooked a meal in who knows how long, and your show's inspired me to get back in the kitchen because you've made it fun, or... You know, young young kids watch the show, and they're like, you know, mom, let's make meatloaf with awesome sauce, and they get <laughs> they get they get all excited. Um, you know, and it's funny too. Like some men as well. You wouldn't expect like Fox Fox Sports had a a call in recently to name your some must see TV, and Bitch and Kitchen came out on top. So I guess you know. I don't know. There's all <laughs> kinds of different people that are that are getting inspired from this show for different reasons. It might be the stilettos. <laughs> it might be the stilettos. You know what I think it is? I think it's my grating voice. It just goes on and on and on like a nagging girlfriend, you know, that kind of still loves you. Of all the men out there, they're like, yeah. I, want I can't get enough that. of that. Exactly. <laughs> Where do I sign up? Is there a special chat line I can call for that, Nadia? I think you're missing a merch opportunity. I think, and, I think so. I think uh, we have to think this through a little bit. And can you say that in Italian? Molto piace, tu voce, molto buono. Tu piace la mia voce. Si, si, buono, buono. We're going to talk in Italian for a while, guys. You guys can just okay. set aside for a while. <laughs> My wife's family's Sicilian. We visited the family there three or four times now. So it's, it's, <laughs> whenever I hear the language, it's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Sicilian is... is, is quite a dialect as well. You yeah, know? There, are, there are relatives we cannot understand. We have to tell them no. Yeah. <laughs> Parlo italiano, por favore. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Even like hey my guys, dad. I just want to take a second. I just want to take a second just uh, just kind of do a shout out on Twitter right now. Dessert Chick, she's at Dessert Chick. She said, if Julia Child and Andrew Dice Clay had a baby, it would be not easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better looking than that. Come on. Oh. <laughs> not personality, not look, not look. And then she also wants to know, are you calling CBC old? LOL. She says she thinks that's funny. And uh, she wants to know how many. And you, you already said a little bit of this, but if you can repeat it, she wants to know how many followers you have, and have you taken the time to personally answer Facebook comments and tweets? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so in terms of followers. On Twitter, I think we have a, a, over 30,000. Um, on Facebook.com slash Bitch and Kitchen, uh, about 104,000. Facebook.com slash Nadia G, around 30,000. And uh, yeah, all the time. I check into Facebook every day um, and, and answer some comments. Sometimes we even have like scheduled live chats on Facebook. Uh, so, you know, during an episode, I'll get online and we'll all have a laugh and watch the episode together. 
That's cool. That's the question. And Danielle from uh, Burbank, she she's at I'm Stuff. She says this is awesome. Watching Bitchin' Kitchen live at Kitchen Party. <laughs> Yay! Danielle's great. She's she's one of our members, and she and I like to try to eat cupcakes together. <laughs> well, I I want to go back to the whole uh, the whole comparison to Andrew Dice Clay because all I can hear now is like Jack and Jill went up a hill to make some cupcakes. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. It's funny, you know. I think a they compare people, him to you now, Nadia. A lot of people got really confused about my accent. You know, they were like, "Where's this chick from? Is she from Brooklyn? Is she from Jersey?" You know, some geniuses even thought I was from Russia. Uh, so, so here's the thing. I'm from St. Leonard, which is an Italian borough uh, of Montreal. And uh, so, so I grew up speaking Italian in a French city and going to English school. So when I speak, you're going to hear all three of those influences. And if you listen really closely, you'll also hear dolphins cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Nadia, how do you um, how do you fall in with the rest of the sort of the Food Network universe? I mean, uh, you know, seeing you with uh, an Ina Garden versus an Alton, where do you kind of fall in um, when you kind of go to these things like an Aspen or South Beach or whatnot? Because I, I imagine that lots of awkward like elevator conversations. You know, it's it's funny. At first, we thought you know we'd we'd be the black sheep, um, but it. We, we had a really warm welcome by the food world. I think they were kind of tired of the same old vanilla show as well. So when they saw Bitch in Kitchen, they, they found it to be, to be pretty interesting. And I had a chance uh, to meet Emeril, and I'm like, oh, man, it's Emeril, you know, the godfather of this whole celebrity chef thing. What a pleasure to meet you. I'm Nadia G from Bitch in Kitchen. He's like, oh, I know. I DVR your show. Well. So... Yeah, they they watch it, you know. They we've gotten a pretty warm welcome, which which is cool. That was great. Did uh, hey, have have, hey. have oh, you ever struggled ahead. with with um uh people maybe trying to tone down uh, the show in any way that maybe it would be a little too edgy or racy? And do you ever have the people who, who <laughs> maybe in the beginning took issue with bitchin' with the word itself? Oh, yeah, man, you know, for sure. Uh, at, at, when we pitched this show years ago, uh, our agents at the time were like, we love the show, but it's not going to happen because there's too much comedy for a cooking show. There's too much cooking for a comedy show, so you're basically screwed. Do you have a reality concept? And we were like, no, we don't have a reality concept, you know. The reality is I sit in front of my computer 12 hours a day with one sock and a falafel, I don't think you want to shoot that. It's not a show, man. <laughs> I don't know. That might be a show. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, TV has low standards. That's pushing you, right? <laughs> so, I, I would totally watch that show. Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> as long as I kept yelling at you. Listen, they if they, you can have a show about people who make duck calls, they can watch Nadia G with a sock, you know? <laughs> Hey guys, so, just just uh, we we have we have one correction. Dessert chick at dessert chick wants to make sure we're all aware that what she meant was that you do answer uh, things personally on Facebook because you answer one of hers, uh, one of her comments. So that's what she meant. She didn't mean do you. She meant you oh, do. Cool. I read that wrong. And she also said, of course you don't look like. Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> yeah. She wants that to be very clear. <laughs> I was like, okay, I didn't do my hair. Very but that's it. <laughs> like, oh, I should have so, maybe so just so it a bit. We're, we're, for the record, she thinks you're gorgeous. And also, I think uh, she has I, some male friends who want to marry you. <laughs> I get a lot of marriage proposals. This is true. And I always tell everyone, send minimum two carrots to P.O. Box 901. <laughs> <laughs> She's got more bling than she knows what to do with already, I'm sure. <laughs> so, so Nadia, what is it that you like to cook uh, when you ever get the chance when you aren't making television or cookbooks or websites? Uh, I'm a big fan of, of making pastas, to be honest. I find sauces so versatile and, and very manageable, you know. You kind of see it all in the pan and, 
you can give it whatever spin you like, whether it's, you know, some lentils and curry in there or, you know, just a very light aglio olio, throw in whatever you got in the fridge, some leftover fresh spinach, cherry tomatoes, garlic. I find pasta is pretty, pretty simple and it's one of the first things, uh, one of, it was the first thing I tried cooking and, and still to this day it's my favorite thing to cook. So I'm going to have to ask you the question that all the women want to know. How is it that you can eat that food and still look the way you do? Well, okay. Um, I, I work out a lot. I, I do circuit training about four times a week. These days, not so much, but next week I'm going to be back at Crunch Gym working out. Um, but also at home, to be honest with you, I don't eat fatty foods. I eat mostly vegetarian, and uh, the groceries that I buy are very boring. And then no processed foods, no prepackaged foods. So it's like at midnight when you get a craving and you open the fridge, you're like, oh, great, soy pudding, or, <laughs> okay, so, you know, carrots. So that's a very, it's a very good trick, you know, to really just keep, simple, uh, fresh produce and things like that in your fridge and in your cupboards uh, so that when you get that, that need to snack, you just have no options, you know? <laughs> so. No wonder you're bitching. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, and, and so when you're, uh, when you're working on scripts, say, for a season, uh, what's your process in terms of how you coordinate it? Because I know, you know, uh, you coordinate with your cookbooks and online um, to kind of go along with what's going to be on television. What's your process for how you develop that? Well, you know, to find the topic, um, you got to write about what you know. So I think about like recent experiences or stuff that's relevant in pop culture. Um, and then the trick is, is there enough to say about that topic? Because sometimes things can sound really interesting, uh, you know, like procrastination, for example. But procrastination, you can't do a whole episode about procrastination. You're probably better off choosing a topic like laziness, which, which, which is what I call an umbrella topic, which allows me, okay, so for one comedic chunk, maybe reference procrastination, and then another comedic chunk, talk about how lazy I am, and then have a top three list of, you know, signs that you're lazy or what have you. So I, I try and find a, a topic that's got enough meat to it. Um, and then to coordinate it, we're, we're a small team, so it's easy, you know. Um, my, my girl, Angelique Pacanco, has been with us since the beginning. Just, you know, she knows our rollout. She knows which episodes are playing. We're, you know, Skyping pretty often and very much in touch. So she's abreast of all the stuff and kind of figures out, all right, so if we're doing laziness, what's the article going to be for this week that references that topic? Maybe we can have a contest, you know, the last person wins or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Dessert Chick put, just put her Twitter in this says, you can do a whole episode on procrastination <laughs> tomorrow right. or right. tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey guys, I'm yeah. The, um, the uh, the way that you you do your uh, your food on your show because you've got to get in punchlines and things like that. Um, you know, this isn't uh, a normal kind of show where it's like I chop and then I saute and then I play. I mean, yeah. How do you how do you decide how to weave that in uh, without kind of getting in the way of making your food? Well, yeah, we and and that's uh, you know director J Josh Dorsey, who's a real genius at putting it all together. Um, and what what we do is uh, we kind of we we cook through the food one time when I'm doing the punchlines and stuff like that, and then at the end of the day we're gonna cook through it all again. Um, sorry, this thing keeps popping out of my ear. We're gonna cook through it all again uh, with just on my hands. So we make sure that we have all the close-ups that we need in order to create an edit that's very tight and keeps it moving. Because the show, we like to keep, you know, we started with a very fast-paced show online, and uh, we like to kind of keep that pace on television. For people who are starting out and they want to kind of inject some video or kind of stick their toe in the, in the video waters, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> that sounds uh, painful. Well, I know. 
Hey, look, Take it's my video toe. The video water. Exactly. You got, you got video all over your toe. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. What, uh, what, uh, what would you suggest in terms of how they get started? All right. Well, uh, oh, geez. So many good, um, good pieces of advice for that. So what, number one, sound is very important. It's almost more important than image, and a lot of people go wrong with that. They'll just use the mic that's on the camera, and the camera happens to be six feet away, and all you hear is a bunch of room tone and echo, and it's very distracting. So do, one, do yourself a favor and get yourself a little laugh. Very helpful. Uh, secondly, I would suggest to anyone to script something out a little bit. You know, you don't have to do a fully scripted show, but it's like you have to know what you want to talk about and and kind of make that interesting and condense that you can't can't just be rambling on and on you know so figure you know sit down and say hey what you know what do I want to say and and then you know write it out and try and remember that when you're shooting it another thing I would suggest is uh, really find an angle, you know, it, it used to be that that food was food uh, and, and an instructional cooking show was enough much like the news was the news back in the day and then the news became you know uh, SNL news and then that became the daily show so food is very much that kind of platform right now where you can turn it into use it as a springboard to incorporate something else and I think that's what the networks are looking for so if one is interested in doing food entertainment, it's important to think of what you can bring to the table. Ugh, I hate these puns. <laughs> we, I didn't even notice until you right. pointed it out. But. Yeah. Nobody yeah. ever brings yeah, things saying, away like, from the don't table. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> Nobody like, ever takes uh, things away from the table. They're always bringing <laughs> things to the table. That's going to be know. a big table. <laughs> yeah. On a bit of a tech note, you, you mentioned lavs, and I'll, I'll say they're lavalier mics, and boy, it's kind of yeah. hard to see there. There's the set that I use, and you know, I call it close miking, and what it is, it means get the microphones on you. Uh, it really improves the sound. The thing I always talk about to new media people is sound is more than half a video. Right, um, yeah. People will tolerate a really lousy picture, but if the audio is bad, you will chase them away. Absolutely. Now, Nadia, I've been to, um, uh, I, I met you at, uh, um, at Blogger a few years ago, and uh, you had the room absolutely riveted during your, uh, during your workshop because you were, you were talking about how the, per how the average person can get started. And in the beginning, you did everything, right? Like, you, 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 you had to know all of this yourself, and I'm wondering how you were able to kind of get up to speed on so many different, different elements from putting video together to writing and social media. And what advice do you have for a person starting out who feels like, I don't have a team of people I can turn to. I don't have well, a director. At the beginning, I didn't have one either, you know. I taught myself how to do everything, and we're, we're lucky. We live in a time where you could find tutorials, you know. Uh, it, it, so you could take the time to teach yourself if you're passionate. Now, the thing is... It does take a lot of work, you know. Um, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be honest, because a lot of people are like, "Oh yeah, dreams can come true," but there's a lot of elbow grease involved in that, and a lot of rejection and learning from your mistakes. I remember, I think it was at Blogger, in fact, <coughs> excuse me, uh, where this one lady was like, "Hey, you know, I have three kids. I don't have much time to devote." Uh, to my blog, I can write about once a week, and everyone's like, you go, girl, you can do it. And, and I was like, well, I don't know if you're going to make it, man. <laughs> I'm like, there's so many people out there that are, like, spending 10, 12 hours a day, you know, and it's a struggle. And even then, you don't know if you're going to, you know, you're going to be able to make a viable business out of it. So if you know you have to differentiate between something being a hobby and something being a career and if you want something to be a career well you gotta do the time so whether it's you know getting your PhD um, in university and spending 10 years in school or spending 10 years in front of a computer teaching yourself to do a number of different things um, you're gonna have to invest that that energy and um, and it's and it's painful but you know at the end of it all you know you just you, you become really manic depressive and <laughs> you know it's worth it 
Well, I think there are differing levels of success. You you get out of it what you put into it, and exactly. You, if you want to turn do what you did and turn it into a tele, a, you know, a quote unquote network television show, then there's X amount of hours of work that have to go into that, and perhaps maybe you you you're happy with the web show that makes enough income through advertising and sponsorship and something like that. You can do that too. Um, I'm very big on on telling people, you know, it really does depend on how many hours you put in and what you want out of it. Yeah. Don't go into it thinking I'm going to put two hours in and have a network TV show. That ain't going to work. <laughs> exactly. you you got to be realistic about that kind of stuff. Nadia, so, when did you start to realize, I have a business here, I can make this work? Um, I would say when, you know, I, I would say when, when we started doing the, the mobile clips in 2007, because it started off as a pitch document, Bitch and Kitchen, and, uh, and we were showing it around. And we showed it to Andy Nolman, who is uh, one of the guys who used to do the Just for Laughs Festival, and he had a mobile company at the time. Um, and he was like, "Wow, well, let's let's do this for mobile." And uh, and I was like, "Okay, cool. So somebody's willing to invest some money to create these clips." Uh, and we ended up, you know, investing even more ourselves to make it look good. Because that's another piece of advice uh, for people who are looking to start to. To uh, to make videos, uh, you got to make it look really good quality. If you if you want it, if you want, especially if you want a TV show out of it, you got to be able to show the networks what you know what you can do, because um, they don't have much imagination. So yeah, going back to that, um, once we got the budget for the mobile series, I was like, cool, there's there's there could be money in this. Yeah, living in LA, and I'm sure Renee would back me up on this. Uh, it, the network executives are not known for their imagination, and, <laughs> and and more so these days. They almost want a completed pilot. Of course, in, in yeah. Their hands. They, before they before they agree to something, uh, one so they can vet you and say, okay, you have the wherewithal to get this done. But also because they have a hard time visualizing what the show is just through text or discussion or some photos or or even short clips. They want to see what the whole piece is before they commit to it. Yeah, exactly. And I remember a long time ago, uh, someone told me that, and I was like, "Oh man, really? You know?" And it, it's painful, but I mean, it's very rare that someone's gonna give you a show or give you a budget without seeing a proof of concept. Uh, mm -hmm. That's for sure. We had a Twitter question uh, <laughs> a little bit earlier. It says, "When when filming Bitch and Kitchen, are all your co-stars in the same place, or are they filmed remotely and then simply edited into the show?" Well, we shoot them at our studio, uh, so we have a green screen and, um, and, uh, and, and multiple sets there, so at the same place. So they all gather together in one location. Yeah. Cool. And, and how was it that you kind of decided to add the characters? Hey, because hey Nadia. Oh. oh. Go ahead. What's that? Go ahead, Babs. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> okay. I, 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 Nadia, I have a quick question. <laughs> <laughs> when you um, cooking channel, when that when that opportunity came to you, what was that experience like? What were you? Was it was it a surprise? Was it like you just worked really hard because you were building these relationships, or is it that you got a phone call and someone was like, "Hey, let's meet for coffee and let's talk about putting you on a, your own cooking channel show"? Like, wh how did that come uh, about? Yeah, I wish. No, man. You know, I say no one ever calls you ever. <laughs> You're always busting down doors until people get so sick of you that they let you in. Essentially, it's been my experience. Um, and oh, there goes the headpiece again. Sorry about that. Is this the good one? Hello, hello. Nope, it's not <laughs> good. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, with Cooking Channel, it was such a, a great opportunity because obviously Food Network is a little bit more conservative. So when they launched Cooking Channel um, and, and the show was doing well in Canada, we, we pitched it to them and they said, okay, let's give it a try, and it became their top show. So <clears throat> that's been pretty cool. I have to tell you, I'm a little concerned about so your backdrop do, because do, do you have this apartment building behind you, and it looks like... A night of a thousand telescopes. Um, I would suggest that at some point you close the curtains because that just looks like Perv City. I'm in Perv live from Perv City. <laughs> and, and there's my next show. Right there. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> 
Hey, you wanted to make money. You didn't say how. So yeah. Urban <laughs> Kitchen. Okay, there we go. Urban All right. Kitchen. I bet um, you had a comment. Who did? What, I did. What? I was um, Nadia. Nadia, what? Who do you like to read? Like, what blogs do you like to read? Or is there anything that um, that's like your favorite in the food space? Or anything that's up and coming? Anything we should check out? Anything uh, that you're you're following? Mm hmm. Let me see. There's a few of them that I've enjoyed, but it has been a little while since I've checked in. I've been doing a lot of, because I do spend so much time uh, in front of my computer these days writing, that to relax, I tend to go back to the old school, um, regular old book, you know? <laughs> so that's what I've been doing uh, this last little while. I haven't been checking in on, on, many, on many blogs, but... You know, there there are so many great ones out there, whether it's yours or Jaden's, uh, Steamy Kitchen, um, Eater, of course. You know, I just, I, I love the attitude that they have. Um, I can't think of them off the top of my head. Nadia, so are you going to, uh, are you thinking about doing an app or anything like that? Are you thinking of uh, going into the digital space? An app, and yeah, we've, we've every every couple of months we think about oh maybe we should do an app, and we haven't quite found the perfect thing yet, but definitely there will be a bitch and kitchen app, and probably um, probably associated with with a, a new series, you know. Awesome. Just to explain Wait, a little technological book. issue, oh. hold on, Babette. Just because Babette's on a lousy Wi-Fi connection in a hotel, oh. and so her de she's delayed like about three seconds. So we have we see her start to talk, and we kind of have to pause for a second. <laughs> That's why we keep talking over each other tonight. But okay, Babette, I'm going to turn it back over to you. you. You know what the worst thing is? Is I can see my video, and it's like incredibly fu fuzzy, and then all of a sudden it goes really clear. And I can tell when my Wi-Fi, like, I'm actually, I'm not even on Wi-Fi. I'm on my phone hotspot. Wow. wow. <laughs> so then actually the connection's quite good. Yes, we're lucky yeah. to have you at all. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you actually, your, I'm the your video the has the color on this, that it Madonna work. was doing your Kabuki video. <laughs> <laughs> but enough <Okay>. about that. <laughs> Nadia, let me ask you, just to, to, to turn it back to food for a second. Obviously, we're in the fall. Fall has fallen hard. Pumpkin spice has crept out of every retail establishment oh. on the planet. Uh, what, what, is, what's you, what are you focusing on for fall? Well, for fall, a couple of different things. Well, one, of course, Halloween. You know, uh, it's, 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 you know, scary Are you makeup. a big Halloween fan? Oh, absolutely. Uh, scary makeup, creepy decor, weird outfits. I made a career out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Halloween. Um, so I've been, I've been thinking up, uh, you know, different, different kinds of, of Halloween treats. Because most of the time, the problem with Halloween food is that uh, it's all looks and no substance. And, uh, you know, that's fine when choosing a boyfriend, but not with food, right? <laughs> That's how I feel. So, wow, this feels uncomfortable. <laughs> Love it. So, so how do you get substance in your Halloween food? Right. So <laughs> we'll just I, keep keep pushing the conversation that direction. Douglas, are you asking her about how she gets fiber in her food, or is she? Okay. No, no, no. Just substance, not fiber. Substance. So I make these really cool bocconcini eyeballs, which are awesome. So you get these little mozzarella balls, bocconcinis, and you, you cut a hole in them. And then you, you grab some olives that have been stuffed with pimento, and you slice those into discs. And then you pop that in, and it becomes the iris. Can you imagine it? I'm uh -huh. holding it like this. And then you, you wrap the thing in prosciutto around it so it looks like the fleshy socket. And, uh, and you can, like, serve this uh, on a plate drizzled with a little bit of aged balsamic. Uh, or you can make like a fresh Italian salsa, just throw a bunch of, you know, uh, cherry tomatoes in the food processor, olive oil, oregano, basil, parsley, garlic, uh, red onion, you know, the typical kind of salsa stuff. So those are really delicious. And then on my Halloween special, we went crazy and we made a bracciola severed arm. Now this thing oh, yeah. is okay, I... just a masterpiece, man. It was a masterpiece. It's, you made you make the bracciola, 
Um, and then you mold a hand out of meatball mixture, okay? <laughs> and you attach it to the, the arm part, and then you wrap the whole thing in prosciutto and bake it in the oven, and then in the last five minutes, remove the foil, and the prosciutto gets all crispy. It looks like burnt skin. It's really, <laughs> really it, something. It sounds gross and yeah. yet... Utterly, <laughs> utterly tasty. So yeah, right? sure. I mean, it's bracciola and the meatballs, and there's some marinara, you know, blood marinara. Oh gosh. Yeah, we do it. We do it. Dead man's foot at our house, and oh, wow. uh, and uh, we cut it off a little bit above the ankle, and then we put like some uh, some chopped tomatoes up at the top of the stump, and we use like onions for toenails and stuff. So you can, you know. You know, the thing I love about your show is that you're able to have fun. I mean, it's like uh, everybody's so serious. I mean, I love Ina Garten, you know, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not going to party in the Hamptons. I can yeah, have I'm fun not with partying in the Hamptons either, yeah. man. I already have trouble partying in the hills. Uh, yeah. I mean, the closest I have with uh, Ina Garten is my name's Jeffrey, and she's married to a Jeffrey, for goodness sake. But, uh, but, you know, you can have fun with your food, and I think that's the thing I like the most about it. It's, it's accessible to just about anybody. Yeah, and eventually they people learn a thing or two, you know. So it's 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 cool. Nadia, hey, you Nadia. talked a little bit about oh. about people maybe trying to steer you in a different direction or, or or questioning your vision at the very beginning. What made you stick to it? What why didn't you maybe take some advice from somebody asking you to change it? What made you realize that you had a great concept and you needed to stick with it? Well, I'm really stubborn, first of all, uh, but secondly, it's weird, like, this type of stuff, it almost feels like it chooses you sometimes, like, this is just it, this is what you do, this is what you're passionate about, and it, it's almost like you have no choice but just to, to keep doing it. I don't know if, if you understand what I mean, but it surely feels like that a lot of the times. <laughs> Excuse me. I think that's an entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, yeah, an entrepreneurial spirit, and, and uh, I don't know, you know, just a one-track mind. <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it, it's also about taking taking advantage of opportunities that do come into your life. As you say, you know, with a TV show, you're banging your head against the doorway of the network until someone lets you in. But sometimes opportunities show up, and you have to be able to kind of grab them and take advantage of them when they're in your interest and run with them because you never know where they're going to lead. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's so important uh, to, you know, at the beginning to, to make mountains out of molehills and like try and enter as many contests as you can so you could say that you're a winner, you know, of, of uh, Denver's Garlic Festival, you know, <laughs> whatever. And then you just choose the word winner, you know, <laughs> and you put that in the bitch document. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you really, you really have to take advantage of all the opportunities that, that come your way. But back to the challenges. I mean, the challenges also when the TV show launched, uh, I mean, you know, Bitch and Kitchen's a kind of show uh, that people love or love to hate. Mm -hmm. You know, at the beginning, I mean, I don't know. It seemed like, 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 God knows what what we were doing. People were like, I can't believe this. All the like grumpy old men came out. You know, <laughs> they're shaking their sticks. They're like, this woman is cooking with nail polish. It's unacceptable. I was like, what is this? The 1800s. I mean, it's a freaking comedy cooking show, man. And even to this day, I have a laugh. Well, back then, I was more sensitive about it. I mean, it was. I was like, wow, you know, I, it, it kind of hurts at first when you get all that criticism but uh, then with time you know it, it rolls off your back and enough you know you understand that you have enough of a community of people who support it and love it so haters will always hate but uh, even to this day it's a real laugh you know people are like that girl should wash her mouth out with soap and I mean <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of nuts. But as Howard Stern said, you know, the people who love you watch your show, but the people who hate you watch even more. So keep right. Right? Mm -hmm. exactly. and, then, and then Howard Stern said, okay, you two women kiss. <laughs> that's right. That's, he, that's what he did say right after that. <laughs> oh, man. And the fact that Jeff knows this is just sort of frightening. Uh, you know, you know. It, the shorthand uh, to Howard Stern is very short. 
right? <laughs> that is that is true. Well, I mean, Nadia, too. What you're doing is you're you're people who take themselves so seriously, like the traditional food establishment, are of course going to stand up and wave their finger at you because you're you're sort of yeah. you're you're sort of waving your finger right back at them and saying it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. Uh, Julia Child is wonderful, but even she got a little wild sometimes. If you can think of that, that yeah, for, especially for her the period of her shows when she was doing her shows. Um, and uh, it's okay to have fun doing something. It doesn't all have to be traditional stuff. Oh, absolutely. You know, and it's like this whole food snobism thing is just horrible because it, it just intimidates people and they're not cooking at home as much because they feel like they can't do it and, uh, and, and they just become, you know, unhealthy, really. So. Yeah, it's, it's it's you know it's always the traditional inver traditionalism versus the new the new young Turk on the scene, and it does set yeah. you up for a lot of abuse early on because simply because you're different. Yeah, for sure, and it's that same thing. It's like you know, don't people know that it makes them sound old by saying that? It's <laughs> like being like the music today sucks. You know, back in the day, that was the real good stuff. It's Turn like, down oh, that damn music! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, people even say that about the music on our show. It did. The music's too darn loud. <laughs> too much rock and roll. When they do the Gilda Radner biopic, you've got the voice down. <laughs> <laughs> a little little Emily Latella coming exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, just what so I you always... guys know, just hold on one second before you guys go. Just so you know, we have about seven minutes left to the show, and I just want to do a call out to at Travelin underscore girl. She says she's watching. She's really excited. She mentioned Jeff Hoke on Twitter. We got Dan Portnoy, who's at Dan Portnoy. He's actually a good friend of mine here in Los Angeles, and uh, they're just uh, they're just they're just chatting up. They're loving it. They think Nadia is awesome, Yay, and uh, we're we're super we're super happy to have you. So we have about seven minutes left to the show. So I want to make sure that we um, promote what you're working on, Nadia. And uh, I, you know, I think I'm I'm really uh, I think you were the first web series to actually be a cable show. Yeah. I don't know if it's just food or how that how that transpired. But um, what was the you you did okay you did the web show and then you did the cookbook and then you got the TV show and now you're doing cookbooks. What's the difference by launching a cookbook before and now after being part of the cooking channel family? <laughs> mm, well you know uh, budget uh, it is a difference for sure. I mean, our first cookbook, uh, we did the most that we could with the budget that we had. And I design all the cookbooks. I love uh, designing. I mean, I designed the website back in the day and, as I mentioned earlier, the logo. So the cookbook was a really fun challenge for me to finally take those web skills and turn them into uh, 300 DPI, you know, whatever, um, real deal print stuff. Um, so luckily with, with the Cooking Channel show, we were able to get a better budget for the second cookbook. So it wasn't just me with interesting hairdos <laughs> behind different color backgrounds. We actually could create more of a, uh, of a scene, uh, which was amazing. I mean, some of the pictures in the second cookbook are, are so awesome. Like there's one of them with me holding two pigs that have like these spiked Louboutin harnesses and I'm wearing matching <laughs> shoes. Yeah, like super badass, like Snoop Dogg style. Oh, and then there's this other one where I'm like uh, just sprawled out in like a just a really kind of gross motel and there's all kinds of candy all over the bed and donuts. It's a gluttony <laughs> chapter. And I have this IV of, of gummy bears right in my arm. Which it's <laughs> creepy, man. It's cool. And then, uh, and then you know, I marry a guy. I married a burger, so I was the groom in my, my pink silk jacket, and the burger had a veil, and we're kissing in front of a church. Um, and we did this before Jack in the Box, for the record. Okay? I saw that football uh, halftime commercial. Yeah. Pulling out Jack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this sounds like a really bad Cinemax movie. <laughs> Again, yeah. Jeff with the Jeff with the. I just. What do you watch all day? <laughs> I have no further comment at this you, time, Your Honor. 
<laughs> Thank you. So I, I'm I plead the Fifth Amendment. Thank you very much. Um, Why, do you find that you're recognized a lot when you go out because you look so different uh, right? in person than you do on TV? Actually, the first time I met you, I don't know if you, you probably don't remember. I do because I was standing there talking to you and I actually had your cookbook in my hand and I was talking to you for about five minutes before I realized you were who you were because <laughs> you look so different <laughs> yeah I do look different but you sometimes you know sometimes I get recognized more often if I'm more dressed up you know um, other times people will be like wow you really you really look a lot like that girl from bitch and kitchen and I'm like man I hate that show I get that all the time you know? <laughs> uh, that <laughs> <laughs> but I, I tell people, I'm like, if you see someone that kind of looks like me but a bit homeless at the airport, it's me, <laughs> you know? Television is a wonderful thing, isn't it? We can all play dress up and look absolutely phenomenal, and then we go home and put on our pajamas. And... What are you trying to say, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, I'm just you saying. Know, you get all dressed up and look good, and then you come home and you look like a schlub. You know, I grew up. I grew up on a farm in Ohio, even though I live in LA now. So I'm. That's more my. That's more my style. Is sitting around the fire with the pajamas and the comforter and you know that type of thing. So see, that's why I don't wear a red shirt to Target because people ask me price yes. questions. <laughs> or blue shirts to Best Buy. That's right. Uh... So Nadia, what's uh, so you all, you came up with obviously your Halloween stuff. What do you got planned for Christmas? Anything? Yeah, well, Christmas, uh, well, no, this year we focused on the Halloween special. I hope they play our, our Christmas special again because we had right. so much fun doing that and creating That was a, a great song. special. Well, yeah, I loved it too, and it was so cool to create that music video and work with, like, you know, Epic Meal Time, the vegan black metal chef, and, like, Andrew Zimmern and Guy Fieri, you know, right. just to mix up these two completely different worlds, but still all in the food realm was really, really cool. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I'm just excited, you know, when our show airs, uh, it airs every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on Cooking Channel. So, new episode this week, and I think the Halloween special plays again this Sunday at 3 p.m. in the afternoon Eastern. So, people could tune in and, and watch that if they missed it the first time around. Well, actually, that's a great start to our wrap-up. We're coming down to about three minutes left in the show. Uh, tell everyone, give them all your social media linkages and websites and Twitters and Facebooks and all that good stuff. Sure. Um, well, you know, you could find me uh, and, my, and, and my crew at uh, facebook.com slash bitchinkitchen, twitter.com slash bitchinkitchen. Uh, our website is bitchinlifestyle.tv, but honestly, just Google Bitchin' Kitchen and you'll, and you'll find us. We have, we have great SEO, so... Actually, I think the word just bitchin'. <laughs> as, I, as I started to type it, I was like, click, 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 what? Yeah. Oh, great. So that would turn up a lot of skater, skater stuff out here in L.A., so I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to being back in Los Angeles next week. So. Nadia, for everyone here at Kitchen Party, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It has been a wonderful <laughs> evening. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I had so much fun. Please. Well, thanks for having me. We look forward to having you back again in the future sometime. Please let us know everything that you're up to. Yay! Um, for everyone else out there, you can find out more about uh, Kitchen Party at Bakespace.com. It's Bakespace.com slash news. You can find recorded versions of all of our past shows. And this show, if you happen to miss most of this show tonight, is available nearly immediately after we finish the show via YouTube. So you can find it all there. If you have questions or comments, please add them to the blog there and also to the Bakespace. Uh, actually, it's just Bakespace on Twitter. Is that correct, Bebe? Yes, and also uh, before we get off, I want to make sure that uh, the the rest of the co-hosts we you tell us where we can find you guys too, so that uh, we want we can follow your weekly trails of good food and bad food. <laughs> I'm on uh, Twitter, Renee Lynch. And on Twitter, I'm Jeff Houck. It's right down there. <laughs> and to complete nice the trend, <laughs> to complete the trend, I am Douglas Welch on Twitter. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. But bet you have a few words to roll us out with. Are we ready to go? I mean, get no, right. I think I think we're ready. Oh, you know, we have actually. We do have something cool. 
we have a cookie contest ah, yes. on our Facebook fan page. Uh, cool. It's, it's Bake Space, so it's facebook.com slash uh, uh, Bake Space. It is a cookie contest where you upload a cookie and you can win one of four kitchen appliances from KitchenAid. They're awesome. One's a stand mixer, six quarts. It is divine um, and we also launched a cookbook with the new Disney movie uh, Tinkerbell movie Secret of the Wings so if you go to bakespace.com look in our cookbooks it's the latest cookbook we just produced uh, and uh, I think that's it for right now we just put out a newsletter today and uh, sign up for our newsletters full deal Thanks, Babette. And to close it all out, thank you all for watching. Whether you're watching you. live or watching recorded, please join us next week for another kitchen party. Yay! Woo! Bye! Bye. <laughs>